I'm Connor. I'm Eric. And, and this, this is, is a PIO, PIO vlog. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Multiple calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers speaking to complaints seen coming out of the unit. Helicopter reporting traffic that there is an older lady that lives there. She is not seen. Hey everybody, welcome back to our vlog. It's so nice to see you all again. Some of you have been wondering where the vlogs went, so Eric and I are excited to be back and talking about some recent incidents as well as Pat shoutouts at the end. I'm going to start with a wildland interface fire that our crews responded to recently. This started off as a vegetation fire off of Lakeside Court in unincorporated Douglas County. When crews started responding to this fire, the Battalion Chief 2 upgraded it to a wildland interface fire uh, and that added more units to the scene because there were structures nearby that were being threatened by the not sure where safety 12 is, but I've got a large flame front moving to the north. If we access off the cold zack where PIO 10 is, we can get behind it, do flame front following, and put it out. Command from Alpha. That's in the Alpha Division. We do need more resources. That's in the Alpha Division. So crews were able to gain uh, control of the fire, stop any forward progression, really get a perimeter around it. Our South Metro drone team was able to fly up and look over the area and see that the fire burned 18.7 acres. Luckily, no homes were burned in this fire. There was a shed that was damaged. The cause of this fire is still under investigation and no injuries to report. Following the brush fire that Connor discussed, South Metro responded to a fully involved garage fire east of Parker. When crews left the station, there was already a huge black plume of smoke in the air, and when Battalion 4 arrived on scene, the garage was fully involved spreading to the grass and the trees. This is a really dangerous situation for us because the Ponderosa Hills subdivision is one of our many wildland urban interface areas where a residential structure fire or an outbuilding fire could quickly become a wildland fire that could impact multiple homes and people in the area. Douglas County Sheriff deputies had to evacuate some of the nearby homes, and thankfully our firefighters were able to control that wildfire before it could spread beyond the property line. They also did a very good job to contain the damage as much as they could to the house that was adjacent to the garage and minimize damage there. The cause of that fire is still under investigation, but thankfully no one was injured. What time for it? Do you copy? Time for repeat. I'm on scene. We got a... Uh, looks like a very story of residential structure. Garage is fully involved. I also got some wildland component. I'm going to be command Alpha side across the street. Send me a brush truck. Hit away one. 1414. Uh, we're responding to a call to get pulled over to the pad. And I hear other assaults. I say here. I think just an update, I'm getting storage of maybe a propane tank explosion. I'm having a small explosion. Uh, Blackcom, Tender 184. 360. Give me a 360, tell me what's going on. Okay. Your incident has been updated. Mid engine 41 and Tender 41, we're just moving. Come here, Mid one. We do have a single story garage. It is spreading over to the Bravo side of the house right now. We have wires down in the back as well as spreading over to the three year old female. The Bravo. Checking out. 46 cops. 14 
need to do 47 on scene. 47, you behind the tender? Confirm. Pull up short, you'll see a car in the driveway. Park by the driveway. Give me a hose line out there. Tower 45, still. Did you have a different assignment for us since we already have lines on the ground with the engine? Yeah, I want you to team up both uh, 47s. I want to evaluate if we can go inside and protect the house. The house fire just east of Parker wasn't the only incident happening. At the same time, there was a brush fire at Cherry Creek State Park, which produced a large plume of smoke that could also be seen across the Denver metro area. When Battalion 3 arrived on scene, he found several acres of fire involved, thankfully all in a very open area and moving away from any structures. That fire grew to 18 acres as well before it was able to be controlled. No one was injured, and fire investigators determined that a hot round from the shooting range nearby is what sparked that fire. Typically in South Metro's district in late July and August, we see monsoon season, meaning very big thunderstorms with lots of rain and precipitation. And unfortunately this year, we're in drought conditions and we haven't had that high rainfall like we usually do. So because of those dry conditions, South Metro has been responding to a lot of brush fires. And unfortunately, the prediction for the rest of the fall is that it will continue to be dry. Even though in the summertime, we tend to think of that as wildland season, some of South Metro's large Largest wildland fires have occurred during the month of October. So we have kind of a worrisome outlook for the rest of the year. Colorado has experienced four large wildfires recently. Our wildland teams have deployed to two of those fires. The one burning near Grand Junction that is sitting at approximately 140,000 acres right now is the Pine Gulch Fire. This has become the largest wildfire to burn in Colorado's history. This crew stayed on the Pine Gulch fire for 14 days, and that is the max amount of time that they can stay on this deployment. So when they got to that 14 day mark, they went through demobilization and then swapped with another wildland crew from South Metro who continued work there. Another one of the fires burning in Colorado that we sent one of our wildland teams to is the Cameron Peak fire burning near Fort Collins. And that Type 6 brush truck was there and was released from that fire. So the Type 3 engine that was over on the Pine Gulch fire burning near Grand Junction, the conditions were improving at that fire. So that crew went over to Cameron Peak and they're still deployed on that wildfire. Wildland fires are not the only area where we have had crews deploy to recently. We have firefighters that are on the FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Team, Colorado Task Force 1, 11 firefighters deployed down south to Hurricane Laura to assist with search and rescue efforts that were needed there. All right, everybody, now it's time for patch shout outs, and we are excited to bring you these from all over the world. The first one is from, and thank you to the person who sent this in because he told me how to pronounce this, the Derbyshire Cave Rescue Organization in the UK. Very neat, thank you. Then we have emergency medical technician for the Commonwealth of Virginia. There's this patch, as well as this piece that goes underneath it. It says paramedic, thank you. We have the Chesapeake Beach volunteer fire rescue patch. Thanks for that one. We have the Winchester, Virginia fire and rescue department. Like the colors on that one. We have Black Rock Fire Rescue. And then we have Plainfield Volunteer Fire Company. There's a few of them from this one. There's that patch. Then there's this one just a little bit larger, still from Plain Plainfield Volunteer Fire Company. And uh, they also sent uh, a 
challenge coin from Plainfield Volunteer Fire Company. And it's actually presented by Chief Irons on the back. Peace. Thanks so much. And to wrap up my uh, my patches is the Notre Dame Fire Department. That was pretty neat to know that there's uh, fire departments that are on college campuses. Thank you so much for trading with us. All right, the patches I have, I've got two from Team Rubicon. I've got this one from Alpharetta Fire. I think I'm pronouncing this right. I should have given this one to Connor to do just in case I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's Wakanda Fire District. This one is from Lockhart Fire Rescue. This one is Eatontown EMS. And Brownerville Fire Department. And that wraps it up for the patches, but I've got a great t-shirt from Ocean Fire Company in Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. Really, really awesome t-shirt design there. Thank you so much for sending these to us. Connor and I are always so excited to look in our mailbox and see what we've got. As always, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. If you like our videos, please give them a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. For those of you that are asking about getting a patch from South Metro, we have a new patch request form that you can fill out. So I will put a link to that in the description for the video. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll be back with a Fleet Friday next week.